damn. It's good to be back here. Out there is exciting, but maybe just a little too exciting. I can understand that. Thank you, again. If you hadn't walked into that bar that day, well, I think all our lives might be a little different. Being here in this place, it's impressive to see what you have done in such little time. I know that Ridley is not so pleased to be staying in one space. Well, no one's making us stay. But we do need people to go outside, to travel to outposts, to find new people, and to get us resources we can't get here. I'm sure she'll be pleased to hear that then. I couldn't help but overhear you and the other Shek. Park, is it? Yeah. Speaking of expansion, we're gonna need to. We got more people here. Nowhere near enough beds for everyone to sleep in. Yeah, we take it in shifts, but we're gonna need a proper space and, well, I know that Jewel is itching to get back into brewing. And Kedji and Firebone, twins downstairs, well, they can whip up a hell of a batch. I'm thinking about knocking out one of those walls, raising up a big building, big enough for all of us. That is quite the plan. Many hands make light work, though. Too right. We're gonna need every single one of those hands today. Kia ora, guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Let's Roleplay Kenshi. We are back here in the sandpit, and there is a lot to update you on. We have everyone here now. As you'll see on the map, there is, there is no one else. Everybody is here, back in the sandpit, and our total number is relatively high. We're up to 28. Eight individuals uh, that are now part of our legion and you'll be able to see that we have three distinct squads this is just to make it a little bit easier when it comes to dealing and seeing where there might be problems so we have our crafters Park Hong Sand Saru and Gary well Gary isn't exactly a crafter but uh, well he's He's crafty in his own right. We then have our largest group, which is made up of 15 individuals, which is our inner team, our inner labor team, which consists of Mew, Lo, Hobbs, Azumi, Hamut, and Ridley, Lars, and Green. Now, this grouping here, they are primarily our farmers, right up until Green. They do have other jobs as well, namely Hobbs and Azumi, are uh, all over the research side of things and the creation of electronics. Electronics is more Azumi's game because Hobbs does have a ridiculous amount of science skill, so he is primarily going to stick as our researcher because he's going to be a lot faster. Uh, and then, yeah, we have Ridley, who is not going to be super happy with staying in one place at any one time. And Hammett, well, Hammett likes action as well, so we will still be taking people outside the walls, but this is just uh, where they are when they're here. We then have Kiji, Firebone, Obelim, oh, let's not forget Jewel on the end there, Ruka, Rain, and Remen. Now, the ones down the end here are, are Shex and uh, Remen, are primarily focusing on the, uh, I guess you'd say the stone processes, the stone mine that's inside, and the, the creation of the steel bars and all those little bits and pieces. Kitchy and Firebone, they are sticking as our cooks, as well as Jewel, who is assisting us with that. We also have them doing a few other odd jobs inside. And then on the outside, we have Ziff and Orin, who are operating the drill over here we then have hanbu and spot who are operating the copper node and then we have jaku and stubs mamuso and they are working on the iron out here now it is kind of a little rough that we have one arm stubs working on the iron rather than working on the drill but you know i feel like ziff and Oren are pretty stern that that is their responsibility we also have bonnie and dogmeat out with this group bonnie is guarding this group and dogmeat is guarding the other bonnie is still pretty young She's got a lot of learning to do. She's got a long way to go, but she's getting there slowly but surely. She's a pup and her hunger is rising back up because we have just recently filled this back up with some meat. But food is going to be the big issue for us here. 
You'll notice now that we have four wells operating because they only operate they only operate at 30% here so we're going to need quite a few of them and we'll be able to figure out whether or not we actually have enough in time. Like we've got nothing in our water storage at the moment so we might need a lot more. You'll also note that we did create this another wind generator because well we are as you can see actually under our power at this stage and look at this the wind is a hundred percent and the reason behind that is because of the other buildings that we've been constructing lately we've got this on the roll as well as four wells each of those are going to be draining out uh, eight at a time so we are actually gonna have to even look at producing another one of these Oh no, we're looking, we're looking okay, we're looking stable at this stage. We can see that our power, cons our power is higher than the actual consumption at this stage. So, as long as it stays that way, we'll be alright for now. But yeah, our fields are active and they are being harvested. I have also had some new storage laid down as we are filling up our storage very, very quickly. The others I haven't worried about so much, but we do have two cacti storage now. Over here we have wheat straw, well a, a grain silo, which I'm considering turning into bread over here. We don't have anyone working these at this stage, but I'm considering doing it because really bread just makes our cacti go so much further. We can see that Keji is working very hard. This is such a noisy room, just listen to that. <laughs> That's a lot of noise. That's a lot of noise. Uh, but if we can see what Keji is doing, Keji is making chew sticks at this stage, which is not the most efficient use of our cacti. If we have a look at our queue here, we can see that chew sticks, they take eight cacti and a little bit of water. Uh, but they only give us 20 nutrition, whereas a dust witch, which uses the same amount of cacti and one bread, gives us 70. So making that bread does make a big difference. So I'm going to actually have a look and see who we might be able to get, you know, on that job. Because we have a fair amount of wheat store around, converting that into flour will make a difference. Something else we'll note is that we have new storage. We have a new copper storage and a new raw iron storage because we were filling these things up really, really fast. Uh, the stone processor currently doesn't have anyone working it at this stage, so I'm going to have to see who is meant to be there. Because no doubt they are operating or doing something else that they shouldn't be. Yeah, we can see that Remen is over here working our steel output here, creating steel bars for us. We have lots of people running in and out at this stage, but yeah, I think I'm going to have a look and see who we might be able to consider for that job. Park is working on the katanas currently, but um, unfortunately, what we're really lacking still is our fiber. We have Jakku working the fabric loom at this stage because thankfully we do have some hemp that we can work but uh, yeah even park and sand you'll see will be leaving their stations from time to time because we just can't keep up with that fabric. Izumi pretty much is going to stay here working on this which is going to improve her science skill which is great we can see the Hobbs is out doing things I think in the field currently because there isn't any research but that's another thing that we can consider because we have so many ancient science books we can do a whole heap of research and finally looking at this here we have a whole heap of stuff to sell so we have a trip in in mind for that Lars, you're just kind of hanging out for now. That's okay, buddy. I think we are still going to see a lot of people hanging out up here. And as you can see, yep, they are just kind of hanging out. And I actually completely forgot. You guys need to go back onto your jobs. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And um, Hong, how about you, uh, or rather Ridley and Hong, give each other a little bit of space there. Look at this. We are most certainly going to need to look at... Uh, at getting this bar up and running because we got people sitting down just hanging out so I tell you what I'm gonna have a look and see who I think might be best for this job here work in the grain silo in the bread oven and I'll be back in a moment all right so I have got Hamut, Ridley and Lars potentially operating this at any one time and as for the bread oven we have Kiji and Jewel who will be working on that 
We'll hope so. We can see that everyone's running up here at this stage because they are looking at getting these training dummies up and running. We have an assassin's training dummy and we have a regular training dummy. Now for this, we will have everything we need to construct it. However, for the assassination dummy, we actually need raw meat to be placed in the thing. Uh, but in between that, we do have a Mark III training turret as well. So all of those are going to be getting up and running. And we can see that Ridley here is working working on that straw flower. Um, we are going to need some light out here for our workers, a quick addition for us to make. Now we're probably not going to go for the really, really big lights. The spotlight is more than good enough to fill up a whole heap of that space. And just looking on the back here, I think it might be worth us actually just dropping some on top of here, just adding a little bit more ambient light for our workers to be able to see by. Um, we have light on that side there, although it seems that our friend likes to work on the other side. So we'll go ahead and just place some more of these lights around. And yes, that does mean that we are going to be consuming more power, as we always are. But that's something that we just need to be prepared for. And right now, as you can see, that power usage has dropped right down to, to barely anything. So I think we're all right in that fact. But the field... Well, this field, we're probably going to have to expand that as well. And the reason why I didn't knock out the walls at the start of this episode was because I wanted this construction to get done first. I feel like getting too many things queued up is a mistake, and it's kind of what we did with our fields. So we just need to work things step by step. We have the manpower now to be able to work on some really big projects. So it's just kind of more about planning at this stage. Remen, I think you are getting that light constructed for us. Fantastic. We'll be able to see at night time exactly how much power we're consuming, but I feel like we should be okay. And I'm going to be intrigued to see how the, uh, well, the flower side of things is going to go and look at that we're going to be using more water so yeah we're going to need a lot more water so i think i'm going to have a look at our research and see what we might be able to do in regards to that because we are just on level two wells we might be able to get even better okay so looking at our research here we have wells three and ore drill two we definitely want these things a hundred percent but i think what we're going to get before them and before anything else, this is all very, very tempting, robotics as well, is under core, we can finally research tech level four. It's gonna take nine hours to research that, so it's a lot of research to do, but you can see that it gives us an upgraded research bench. So that means that we're gonna be, you know, researching even faster at that stage. So let's see if we can get that done. It's gonna take some, you know, some attention from Hobbs, we're actually going to move Engineer down so that he focuses entirely on that. And let's just check in with Hobbs. I think he was trying to build that light out on the wall there. Very good of you, Hobbs. Very good. But we need you to get inside here, hang out with Azumi, and do some research. And here we go. He is doing what he does best. And we have those spotlights getting placed just before the sun starts to set. It's going to be intriguing to see how they're looking at night. But getting Wells 3 and getting the ore drill upgraded is going to make a massive difference. Now, I did kind of check in with the ore drill. It does only work for iron ore. It doesn't work for copper. There is a mod that changes that. But I think we'll just be sticking with native for now. Because really, we've got enough copper coming in. And that's just from two people mining this thing. Yeah, I, I, I don't foresee us needing a whole heap more before long. I mean, we're, we're balancing that out okay. You can see that the raw iron though, even though we are working these things here, there's still a lot, a lot going on there. I feel like the people that we have working these, so like Ruka for example, I think it's probably going to be worth us taking Ruka off engineering, even though she is a pretty decent engineer. Just having her stay there is going to be more worthwhile because those machines take a while to, to kind of get running. So we're going to go change engineer on Remen here and we can actually see that he's kind of there to fill all the gaps. We've got him on all these different machines so that if anyone isn't working, he will be able to come along and start working. I have actually decked everyone else in some form of armor, so they're doing okay in that regard. Lars is kind of just hanging about for now. And the, and the reason that's happening is that um, 
well, he is part of our farming team. And there are going to be periods where the farming team are on standby, but the second that fields are ready to be harvested, they're going to be running around like crazy. They've got a lot more work to do, but yeah, let's get that research done. After that is done and dusted, we're going to have a look at getting our upgraded wells and everything else. Sand, are you stuck behind there? How did you, how did you get behind? How did you even manage this? How did... <laughs> how did he get behind here? How is that even possible? He must have teleported down the stairs at some point. This is, this is not good. This is not good. Um, so I'll tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> Sand, <laughs> Sand, you're going to have to hang out there until Hobbs is done researching and then we can destroy this bench and replace it with the upgraded level 4 bench. But I, buddy, I don't know how you got in here. He must have been running down the stairs and just got pushed down because everyone was working on this stuff. Yeah. Well, that's slightly concerning. Don't starve, please. <laughs> Hobbs, research quickly so that we can rescue Sand. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we are going to start increasing our speed at this time. All the while keeping an eye out for anything flashing. It's, it's funny, even though it flashes, there is still a chance that I just miss the flashing. I feel like we need a very loud uh, alarm sound to assist with that and see if that actually makes a difference. Something I did want to show you all because I've had quite a few questions is the mods that we're using. They are pretty much the same that we had at the start. More names, free the hair, which just allows hair to not kind of clip or get cut off when you're wearing different helmets. Faces Plus gives us more faces. Dark UI changes this here. Clipping issues fixes some issues that, you know, with armor clipping through each other. The font redux well, changes the font here. Attack slots 4 means that up to 4 people can attack one target, so it's not always just going to be one on one. Minor mess fixes, it's what it sounds like. The face paints add those cool little things. The animation overhaul adds all those animations that we're seeing when people are working on different things. More combat animations adds exactly that. Different variations to combat. Slopeless allows us to build on slopes and not have it be some kind of funky ass angle. It allows us to level things out a little bit more. Not so much a problem here, but if we tried to build somewhere else, it can be. And then finally, the 256 squad limit. I don't know why it's 256. It's an interesting number to go with, but um, well, it is what it is. So, Let's keep that on rolling. I'm happy to see that Keji is here pretty much all the time making the food, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind. Ah, I see. The bread oven just happens automatically. It might be worth us making more than one bread oven then. Yeah, because that's going to give us a chance to have bread baking more regularly. I mean, it's only four building materials for that to, to start operating. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to chuck um, three of them down. So we're going to have them on each part of this building. I know, just like this. Yeah, I feel like that works. So we'll go ahead and confirm that. And we'll get the same group working on those once they're actually placed down. We can't see the outside lights yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they look like properly when they're, you know, all said and done. Look at them, off to do their things. Let's get that tie rolling on by. Hobbs, just keep on working, buddy. Sand, you'll be free, eventually, I promise. And we have a beast trader on the way to the sand pit. Well, we have a decent supply of goods that we can sell to the beast trader. So I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do that. And bam, we can see the lights have just turned on. We can see that it's pretty damn bright in this area. It's kind of because of the combination of light sources pinging on down towards this thing. But these lampposts are just like kind of crazy bright. Nice, look at that. That's more than enough light there. Brilliant. I like that. And over here, it's just this nice illumination. They're not too harsh on the eyes. That one over there most certainly is. Those lampposts are ridiculously bright, but you know, it's okay. It's also the mixture of light temperatures that kind of, yeah, irks me a little bit. I mean, it looks nice here. You've got your daylight tones and your tungsten tones, but yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those things I'm like, uh, yeah, that's okay. I think this place is going to look really good um, 
over time, just as we start to expand and we get the different lights throughout the place. Kind of looks like a runway strip almost. Stubbs, how are you doing outside here, my dude? You're doing a fantastic job, buddy. Love your work. Love your work. Slowly but surely, he's getting there. And what about our other team? They're always working hard over here. Hanbu and Spot. They're kind of experts now. Both of them have a really, really good laboring skill. Let's just check and see how they are. 69. Very good spot. Hanbu rocking that 77. You're looking good, dude. You're looking good. Okay. Back inside we go. Alright. Well, those did get completed. So I wouldn't mind seeing this get all set up. And we've got two things of bread. Fantastic. This is actually kind of working out. So let's go to our queue. Get rid of two sticks because screw them. Dust switches on repeat. And that's, well, that's us. Like, that's me sold. I'm so happy that that's an actual thing. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'm going to get everyone queued up here. And we're going to start fast forwarding through the night to see if we can get sand out of here. Okay, we have a bone dog attack. It was Jakku originally that was alerted to this bone dog who's just patrolling around here, who was aggressive towards us for a second but seems to be minding their own business for now. Well, we know we don't want that to happen for too long, so dog meat, we need you to go out and uh, show this doggo who is boss now i can see some groups moving in the distance there they are nomads i gotta assume that they are the people who are coming to trade with us i would hope so i can't see them anywhere else on the map but dog meat is on her way out there to go and really show us how a bone dog truly fights we're ready for that throwdown Oh, fantastic. Te tech level 4 has been completed at the same time. Uh, so this is an adult, whereas, yeah, dog meat is an elder. Let's see how this goes down. Okay, 101 with the attack on the head nearly immediately takes this thing out. Everyone else is coming to help, but that, uh, yep, nope, they are not going to be around for long. Stubbs coming to heal dog meat up. Dog meat, you're a professional. Love what you do. Now, we could have seen Bonnie in there, but Bonnie is still a pup, so isn't really ready to fight against um, adults like that. Uh, let's go check on Kiji and Firebone, though. It uh, looks like they were trying to medic. I want Kiji to come out towards here to see if we can get uh, some automatic animal foraging done. I mean, it's dying. It's not going to come back up. Let's see... And bam, we have foraging happening. Fantastic. It's exactly what we want. Now take the rest of the cook stove, and then after you're done there, you'll take the rest of the skin. So it sounds like we've actually got things working properly. Back over here though, well, we need to get all of these books out of this thing before we try and construct it. So let's go. That that's gonna take a little while. So I'll be back after this thing is destroyed. Okay, we have got it placed once again, this time with a little bit of room at the back. I did have to get rid of our storage for our, our electronic components at the same time. Uh, so we're going to have to find a new place for electricals to live. I think somewhere that's not exactly directly opposite there probably would be better. Um, we might be even be able to get two just on the side here. So let's see if we can be tricky with that. And indeed, it seems that we can be tricky with that. Fantastic. So we'll ask for all of that to get created. And then as soon as that is up and running, we're going to be able to upgrade our wells and upgrade the drill. I'm not sure what part is going to require us to use for the well, but um, we'll find that out soon enough. Now as for Gary, we need to get Gary loaded up with some, uh, some goods. I am tempted to wait until the trader arrives though. Yeah, I mean, we really, we need to buy more, we need to buy more food for the animals at this stage. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, we did actually get some raw meat, but I think that might have even already been processed. Let's have a look on Kiji. No, Kiji has one. I wonder, yes, you did do it. Fantastic. You brought it up here. You bloody legend. And just like that, our assassin's doll is done as well. I say assassin's doll. Uh... Not exactly a doll, but a training dummy of sorts. We do want our folks to be training on those. Now, this is only level 2, so it will get your skill up a bit. 
but not too far. Sand is actually one of the people that I would like to get his assassin skill a little bit higher. He can't actually learn anything from this though, so really it's more for beginners. And looking in at the rest of our turrets, yeah, you're perfectly fine. And I believe we also had, of course, Green, who is really good at turrets. Yeah. Now we could start trying to train up some of the others. Hobbs. Well, I actually want you to be researching, so that's not going to happen. Low is already more than experienced enough. Obelim, same deal there. Really, we want to have a look at the people who we don't want to be exactly on ground level. So maybe Lars. Your skills are okay. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get you up here for now. Training on this thing. I'm going to be intrigued to see if training in the darkness affects you. And it doesn't seem to. There's no efficiency loss there. And your skill with turrets has already gone up. Licking, looking, rather, not licking, looking at the rest of our troops, we need to figure out who and what we want to train up. I would like to get Sorrow to get a little bit of melee skill, so we'll send you across to here. And then really the Assassin's training dummy, I can't think of who else would want to uh, be operating that for now. There really isn't anyone else that is stealthy. Um, sand is kind of our go-to, and I don't think we'll be training anyone else in stealth. The same reason why I haven't put down any of the kind of thievering tools. Thievering? Yeah. Now that might be not the best plan, because if Sand dies, then we are all out of thieves, and we'll have to train one up again from scratch. So Sand, just, just stay alive, and you'll make our life so much easier. Um, still no sign of those traders yet. If we head on over to Faction, we can see that... They are on their way, these nomads. Now, if it is that group over there, they're going on a very strange route to reach us. They've kind of walked all the way across here, and they're going all the way over that way. So, yeah, maybe they're not actually coming our way. Tis a shame. I'd like them to be here by now. But I believe we waited too long already. And so, Gary, we're going to get you loaded up with equipment, and we're going to be sending you out into the wider world. Oh, it's nearly done. Fantastic. Good work, team. They've been working very, very fast. So let's see. Um, we've actually got food in here. That's good. That's all the new food as well, which means that we ran out of the old. So, yeah, we need to be a little bit faster on that. Okay, Gary, let's get you loaded up with the equipment. We're going to take that grog, the power cores, pretty much all of them. The robotics components. Skeleton muscles, CPU units, and that there. We'll take all of the other smaller animal trophies. We're looking good. We'll keep the skeleton repair kits for now. We don't need to sell them yet. They're worth a whole heap, but uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we can have a look at excess resources, which I don't think we'll actually have many of. Oh, and we're under attack. So looking at our copper, we do have an excess, and we have an excess of raw iron as well, which I still kind of find crazy. Um, how are we looking on our plates? Well, we've just used a whole heap, so I'm not going to take the iron away, also because we're using that to produce these steel bars. The copper though, the copper, I think we'd be able to take a fair amount of that away with us. So let's have a look. I don't think I can just straight up split it. Well, let's take a bit wind them down because we really don't need that many electronic components I'm pretty happy with that so that's Gary set and ready to go let's have a look and see exactly what's going on on the outside Bonnie is in trouble from somewhere or from something and it is another bone dog that's chilling out there now let's see well we have two of us here I reckon we should be able to take care of that the others will come and assist Oren and Ziff. Well, Oren, let's get that backpack off your back. Ziff, you're all ready to go. Bonnie, I would rather you stay back. We're going to put you on, not on hold, we'll just put you on block for now. Okay, and let's go take this thing down. Attack target, and I think that is the only one. We'll find out very quickly if that is the case though. Ziff, coming in with a big strike. Oren, same thing there. Good block. Okay, that's going well. Oh, Bonnie, with those quick little nips. Watch out, Bonnie. Bonnie, you're on block as well, but you're still doing still doing a decent job. Oh, she's got a few bad bites in. 
Come on, take the thing down. Its head's nearly out, and we got it. Bonnie... Actually, it was Bonnie that was not feeling too good. Yeah, Bonnie's critical. Let's, uh, let's... Stubbs is healing her up. Fantastic. And let's go to Inner, and we'll just get Kedgy to run over and, uh... Oh, you were already on your way out here, bud. Uh, doing medicking first. Very nice of you. And Bonnie is feeling okay. She's going to recover just fine. Uh, but going back to Gary. Gary actually came out to uh, attempt to help as well. Uh, we're going to be sending a few. Well, we don't really need a whole few. We're just going to grab Ridley for now. Ridley's going to be assisting us with this. So we're going to turn you off your jobs for now, Ridley. You got a food cube on you. Lucky you. And let's just take uh, the thieves backpack for now. Congratulations, you can take that along with you. And it's going to be Ridley and Gary who are going to be meeting up out here. Now, it's probably going to be easier if I actually grab Ridley and put her in a separate group with Gary. We could just have a separate squad for travelers. I mean, we had one for a while. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's going to make it a little bit easier to see if there is something going on outside of our gates. So Gary, you're going to live in there for now. And we are going to grab Ridley, who's going to be happy to be leaving this place behind for now. As, yeah, she doesn't really like to stay in one place for too long. She doesn't have great skills, but she will get better. Her athletics are actually pretty average, but we're not going to be taking her very far. We're literally just going up to the way station, so we should, should be okay. <laughs> we'll see if that's the case or not. And they are off. Fantastic. Now, looking back inside here, we don't have anyone stuck inside. That is a magnificent success in my book. We still have some electronic components on the ground and some books. Um, no, the rest, okay. <laughs> I, had a, I had a mild freak out for a second then. The rest are all in Sans inventory. Wow, I was freaking out for a second then. I was having a full freak out. Okay, so uh, obviously I'm gonna go ahead and drop all this off camera because uh, it's a lot. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, that is all done. We've got all of our books back there now. We can actually research tech level five with the amount of science books that we've got. And we are gonna have new things that we can research. We can actually learn um, large building shells right away. I'm relatively sure we have had that hidden away for a very long time. We cannot learn this yet. Requirement. Oh, this is for advanced outposts. We need to learn large building shells first. I see. And for that, we need engineering research. It is something that we've struggled to find out there in the world yet. But, well, in time, we have an automatic loom for both cotton and hemp. Now, if we had a whole heap of that, we'd be set. We'd be looking really, really good. We can see that we can actually, with robotics, start making some different uh, prosthetics, which I can see that helping us out. We've also got advanced harpoonery. That sounds like it's right up our street. And in electrics, we have advanced wind theory. I'm wondering if that just, yep, allows us to upgrade our wind generators. Brilliant. Automatic flower grinding. Well, right now that's not something that we desperately need, but it's something that we might look into. Because it automates a whole heap of things then. The steel refinery can upgrade, the wells, the iron plates, a lot of things that we can upgrade there. Chain armor crafting. Fantastic. Well, we've got a lot to look into. I'm going to go start to get this thing set. It's a lot to go through. So, I'll be back yet again in a moment. Okay, so this is all the research that we have queued up. We can see that we only have five books left at this stage. So, not enough to get to tech level five. But there is still quite a lot of research that just uses regular books. So, I'm going to try and purchase a whole heap of them as well. But this is going to take a wee while to get through everything. We're starting off with Wells 3. Then moving into iron plates, steel bars, ore drill, robotics, and then all the way down to chain armor crafting and some advanced weapon grades as well. Caton number three it means that we're producing some very good blades by the time that we are done. It's a lot of work, 
for Hobbs to do. He is going to have some incredibly sore hands from all the research he will be doing. How are we doing, team? Well, we haven't actually even reached the end of the, rather the start of the ridge here. But it's not going to take them too long once they start running up from there. And if that isn't the group, I'd be really surprised. I mean, it's a trader's guild. Are they still on their way? I mean, maybe they are. They're just, uh, they're just out there somewhere. Ah, here we go. We can finally see them. Well, they were a ways away, but they, they are here. Okay. Well, we'll keep our eyes properly peeled for them once they actually do arrive. This trip is going to be a, a small one for our travelers, but, uh, I might consider extending it. I am a little concerned because, well, Ridley just really isn't geared up for running long distance at this stage. Not really too bad though. I mean, the the wooden sandals help improve her athletic skill and that will be getting higher as she's running about. So who knows, we might even look at sending him, sending her further away. But we are nearly at here now. So we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward until we are within those gates, nice and safe. And we'll let that load in. Ridley. Let's go into here first of all and see if we can pick up any belongings. You're actually here already. Fantastic. Just teleporting in. Brilliant. Okay, let's trade. And we have quite a few things that we do want to trade with you. So let's start by trying to get rid of some of these. All right. Fantastic. We're looking pretty good. We want to make sure that the price is good. Um, so, we, oh, actually the price markup isn't that great here. We'll go ahead and buy those back. We're looking at 80%. It's not really what we want. Um, 99, so that's close. Obviously, Grog is worth a lot more here. Okay, we'll take that. Uh, we'll sell the Skeleton Muscles, that's also a good price. Yeah, we'll get rid of all these bits and pieces, but looks like we might be holding on to these for a little bit longer, just because we're not kind of getting the prices that we want for them. Yeah, and it does, it does make a difference. So we'll go ahead and start selling off our Copper as well. 99% is perfectly fine in my book. We're going to go pick that up. We'll pick up the wheat store at the same time. The cacti. The one thing of fabric. And let's see. Yeah, we can't get that yet. Well, we, we've got that already, but we can't use it. Exactly. Um, nothing else that we really want to buy because we can produce everything else ourselves. That's just so that we can actually start making our own bits and pieces. But really what we're after is food, which we will find inside here. And we're nearly back at that 100k mark again. We're doing pretty well for ourselves. If we actually run into trouble, we might be able to hire some mercenaries from here. It's quite possible. Yeah. Okay, so we already know anything about the swamps. We could just buy the bread. Yep, we'll do that because we'll be able to, um, yeah, we'll be able to make some more sandwiches. Pick up the dried meat and the meat wraps. That's pretty much all the foods that we're going to grab from here. Oh, there are food cubes as well, but the cubes are quite expensive. The value here is under a thousand, so it's, it's not as bad as it usually is. And they would keep us fed for a while. Hmm. Let's go sell some more of these and see where we stand after that. Uh, we could look at grabbing them. What the hell? We'll do it. Bite the bullet. And we could theoretically sell off some other things, but we're looking at the same prices, so nay. We'll call that a success. We'll get these two to head back with what they've got for now. And looks like we will actually have those traders arriving as well. So... I don't know whether or not we want Gary to be holding on to all those things. I think whoever we send to talk to the trader will want to give all those little bits and pieces too. So we'll let them run back. We'll just see how everyone else is doing here. Park, you're just hanging out the top. And the reason being, fabric. We're pretty much almost always going to be lacking in fabric. Which is unfortunate. Now we need water over here. We don't have water on them. Everything over there needs water. And do we have any water sitting around? No, we do not. So, we, yeah, we're, we're at a point now where we need water for a lot of things. We need water over here as well for baking bread. So, Wells 3. How close are we? We're not close at all. Hobbs, why are you aimless? Oh, dear. That's not on a... Uh, 
You're not researching? Of course, because we destroyed it. Well, luckily not too much time has passed, but yes, that is your top priority. You can see operating machine was broken because we left it for too long. Now Hobbs, get back in there, start researching, and we'll kind of get an idea of how long this is going to take. Shouldn't take too long in the hands of Hobbs. We can actually check on that though. Four hours. Okay. Let's make it. Let's make it happen. We need that water. I we could chuck down some more wells. I mean they produce water automatically. We I think we need it. I think we need probably around about six of them. Um we will be upping our wind power as well, so we should be able to support it. Yeah, we'll see. We might be pushing it. Farming. Looking at our wells. We are going to be dropping this thing down, but the question is where? Uh, we can probably fit it in here. I didn't want it to be too close to the front door, but um, we'll go for a position where the majority of people can access it, and that looks like that should be fine there. I don't want to put it in there because I feel like we'll be cutting them off a little bit too much, but we can, if we edge over here, put it next to the uh, corpse incinerator, like so. Just give them enough room on either side. There we go. Two new wells to be placed down. Yeah, we'll see how that works out for us. It is primarily building materials and iron plates, which we should still have an okay amount of. It actually looks like we're using our iron plates fairly regularly. Um, yeah, so that's a small bottleneck that we have there, just because obviously we've created so many things recently. A lot of the iron plates have gone towards that. We do have some that are just sitting in here at the moment. I would prefer that we get that sorted before long. I didn't buy any iron plates as well because we are, well, producing our own. So generally that should be okay. So we've got no animal feed at this moment. So we're going to make sure that we change that. Looking at our travelers, uh, Ridley, I think we need to talk to you about some of the food that you have in there. We're going to be dropping off the meat into that space. Drop, drop, drop. And obviously we are going to need a lot more than that in the future, but um, well, it's enough to get us started at the very least. And we'll go back to our food barrel, which is looking okay still. Alright, now Gary. Ooh. We're okay. We're okay. We have some strange happenings going on here. Feel like I'm breaking the game somehow. We'll drop those food cubes in there. That should be everyone fed for a really decent while. Ooh, okay. We have got some chugging going on, which is a little concerning. So I tell you what, I'm going to put in a little bit of a cut here. Oh, no. We're okay. We're fine. False alarm. Let's get the wheat straw in there and drop off everything else just so that we're all set and ready to go. More cacti, and we'll hold on to the rest, just dropping off that piddly one piece of fabric. Yeah, I'd like to be able to do better than that. And I suppose we'll keep them in the squads that they're in for now. This group is going to be arriving soon, so let's have a look. Gary, we kind of need to transfer your things over to sand. So let's get you trading together, huh? Where are you at the moment, Gary? Where are you? Oh, you're over here. There we go. Ridley, we're going to get you back onto a job as well. So let's get you doing your thing. And Sand, we're going to get you picking up all those bits and pieces. So that we can get you trading with the Beastmaster. Because... I really would like to get some more bone dogs. I don't think we're going to need another Gary. Gary is irreplaceable. But, uh, hey, perfect timing. Excellent. Hoi there, townies. Let's go have a chat, Sand. See what we can do. See what we can trade. It looks like it's primarily Garus and, and cattle. That's not what I was hoping for. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay. Pack beasts for days. Oh, there is a bone dog. A male pup. 
Okay, pack bulls, pack bulls, and a goat. I kind of did promise a while ago that I would buy a goat if we got a chance. Uh, looks like we can't actually sell anything to them, but we can purchase. We are going to be purchasing the bone dog, and we are going to be purchasing the goat as well. Oh dear. Well, yeah, that's that's cool. We'll go ahead and purchase them. Oh, we're going to have to give them names, aren't we? Okay. All right. Well, we knew we need a name for you, don't we? Well, for you, I think we're going to go nice and simply with Barker. Barker, you're our first, uh, our first male bone dog. Unfortunately, breeding isn't a thing in this, but uh, there we go. There are other characters. Oh, hang on, wait. Let's not continue. We're going to go across to the other character, our tiny, cute, adorable little goat. Wow. What about you, hmm? Uh, yeah, so for, for our goat here, we are going to go with Gotaga the Great as I feel like that's probably a sufficient name that Hambu would uh, would give to this fine goat. So, Gotaga. We got Barker and Gotaga out of that, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I tell you what, we are going to have them on the outside here, and they are going to be working with the others. So, Barker, let's get you bodyguarding dog meat, and Gotaga... <laughs> We're going to have you bodyguarding Bonnie so that you're kind of always around each other. And we will try and go for Bonnie there. Bodyguard, fantastic. And we'll go to our squads and we'll put you on outer, just like so. Well, congratulations, you're now a part of that team. For whatever that means. And Gary, we need to go ahead and trade with you, giving everything back to you. The wells are nearly completed, but it's going to take us a little bit longer, unfortunately, before they are done, which is not exactly to my liking, but, well, let's get these two up and running, and then we'll get those upgrades rolling. Who would have thought that water would be such an issue in the desert? No one could have foreseen this. No one. Now, Rimmon is helping out over here on the stone processor. Um... But no one's working here on the steel bars, which is kind of okay, because steel bars aren't so much an issue for us at this stage. It's more just the iron plates that we always are in need of, uh, especially now that we're building these additional wells. They are going to need them. We just need one more over here. And that's that well up and running. This one needs a little bit more. It'll take a little bit longer. Jaku, you are working that cotton into fabric. Fantastic. The uh, return rate from that isn't super high it takes a lot how are we looking over here we do have some bread and firebone is working which means that we do have more dust sandwiches getting created all the time here love your work it does take quite a bit it takes eight cacti to be able to get this thing up and running and unfortunately the cacti are a decent ways away they're all the way down here jewel and kitchy they're just hanging out for now Oh, we do have some more here, though, so we've got an okay amount. And, oh, bandit demands are moving towards the sand pit. Well, let's go have a look. If we go to squads again, wherever our squads are, and go to faction, we can see that, uh, yep, we do indeed have some dust bandits moving on towards us. Let's see if we can gather what direction they might be coming from. Ah, they're, they're a ways away. They're all the way by Squin for now. Now, if we wanted to, we could take a preemptive strike. We could go out there and hit them while they're out just here by themselves. But it's going to take them a while to get here. And being dust bandits, I don't imagine they're going to have a huge amount of food on them. So they're going to be hungry by the time they arrive. Hungry and tired and worn out. And then that's when we unleash our harpoon guns. Who knows, we might even have some of our other research done by then. We're just gonna keep on fast forwarding through this, occasionally going back to the map just to see what their progress is like. And they're actually moving pretty quickly, surprisingly so. So I think we are gonna be covering this group in today's episode. We do have our final well up and run, and we actually completed our research. That's done. Now, for here, it's just iron plates and building materials. Fantastic. So we're going to do these one at a time, just so that we don't have wells, you know, not operating. Just one at a time should do us. And then I'll actually be able to tell what the difference is between them. 
Iron plates looks like that's going to take a while. Oh, hang on. Let's check in on Lars and Saru over here because they're probably nearly done by now, right? Um, okay, attack skill of 10. So you're, you're getting there. You have a little bit more that you can learn. And Lars, how are we looking on the turrets? 14, that's pretty much the max he's going to be able to get. He can get 15, but that final level just takes forever to learn. So we'll let him go back to whatever the work it is he's doing. And this is a Mark III, so yeah, max is 15. Carry on, folks, carry on. And they're moving past the exile camp, which means that they're actually getting pretty close. Let's start slowing things down now. We should actually be able to, to see them. We can see them in the distance. So let's look at our outside group. We're going to turn jobs off and move them back inside. Same with this lot here. Get them on the inside, nice and safe. Oren, it's going to be the same thing for you. And for these three here, jobs off, get back inside. We're going to close down the gates and then prepare for this attack. After the ones that we've dealt with so far, I am relatively confident that we're going to be able to handle ourselves. But I could be completely wrong. So, does this look any different? Um, yes. I think it's got a little bit more equipment around the outside. And just like that, it is done. Let's see what the difference is here. So efficiency is 37, whereas the efficiency over here is 30. So we're getting an extra 7% of efficiency. Hot damn. We're going to be getting water like nobody's business. Yeah. <laughs> Anything over 50% is considered good. I mean, like, yeah, you're sure, sure. But getting 30% water in a desert ain't bad. You know, it's not bad. <laughs> Sure, we could have a water outpost somewhere, but then that's another place that we have to protect. So we'll just be constructing even more of these things, which is going to increase our need for power, which is going to want, you know, make us want to just build more windmills and have cool wind farms and stuff like that. That's all worthwhile. So those two are now back inside, so let's go close that door down and get ready for this group to arrive. Now, I've lost sight of them. <laughs> Okay, they are still over here somewhere. Maybe see them just coming around the corner? No, not quite yet. They might actually be engaging the exiles. Hmm. Well, if they are, <laughs> if they are, I'll be completely fine with that. We'll go ahead and close that door down. If we do see them again or see them moving, we're going to look at some. Um... Huh, have they actually stopped? I wonder if they stopped because we closed our gate. Let's go ahead and just open up the gates and just see if they choose to start moving towards us again. Maybe they've got gate sense. That would be interesting, isn't it? Let's see. Well, they are still moving, just very, very slowly. Hmm. Uh, where are you? Oh, you're here. Kind of. I can see you, but I can't see you at the same time because you're so damn far away. You're just a speck. Actually, I think they... M oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they messed up. They went and fought the, uh, the Band of Bones. They totally have. That's exactly what they've done. Okay, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to make a quick squad and we're going to go and clean them up. Okay, I've pulled together a quick group here. <laughs> um, we're going to go back to Labor Outer and we're going to turn on all their jobs. Let them get back to to doing what they're doing and this group here we're gonna we're gonna head out together so we'll just get everyone grouped up to start with and then start heading out with our little attack team here we should have jobs turned off for everyone let's let them start filtering out okay that is everyone here uh unfortunately barker yeah we don't want you doing that so i'm gonna take you off jobs for now because um yeah Unfortunately, buddy, you could get very, very hurt here. Ah, of course, bodyguarding is something that's always turned on. Well, Barker, we're going to have that off for now. Who are you? Hello, random. Ginty. Well, thanks for stopping by, Ginty. Hmm, interesting. Uh, oh, no, that's, that's when we get into trouble. When you let Sand start running off by himself. Okay, buddy, go at everyone's pace. Stick together, team. Actually, Sand, you can lead this charge. 
Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what's left of them. And uh, I really got to think it's not much. Those poor bastards. Well, do we really feel sorry for them? No, not really. Not really. Uh, so let's see, Park has a backpack on that needs to come off. Ridley can keep hers on. And Sand, Sand will need you to remove yours. There we go. Um, no problemo. Done and dusted. Okay. Keep moving up. And I think we can move a little bit faster. Is that another one of them? Or is that Band of Bones? That is Band of Bones. Is it just the one? So, that's the group that are coming to fight us. <laughs> oh, you guys messed up big time. Um, let's see, that Band of Bones member is pretty decent. Pretty decent. Park, let's make sure that you aren't wielding... A, you're wielding a blade. Do not wield the blade. Although, even though, as you can see, he's actually pretty good with the blade. That's 43. But his martial arts is really good as well. I'm in two minds. I don't know. Let's actually, let's let, let's let him keep that and just see how he performs in this fight. Damn. Well, there ain't, there really is not. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh uh, dear. Okay. Um, oh, so it's just you? Okay. Yeah, it's because attack all works in strange ways sometimes. Uh, so I can't even see the enemies anymore, so I'm not quite sure where they are. <laughs> where they are. Uh, here they are. These slithering snakes. Okay, now that's taken them off. Now, now green obviously isn't attacking. So if I say attack all, now you want to do it. Go off towards the side if you can. Try not to shoot any of us. Alright. Park doing some damage. Alright. Attack all team. Or rather attack this target. Yes, you are in trouble. You really shouldn't have come out this way. And the bandit demands against the sandpit have been defeated. And Dogmeat just straight up ate that guy's leg. Welcome to Kenshi. That's how we do. Um, do we want to grab anything here? There is a heart protector. The heart protector is decent. And you know what? The spiked helmets, they can also be helpful as well. So Park, put on the backpack. And go ahead and pick up that stuff and things. Except we didn't open up the backpack, so you didn't take anything. All right, uh, what about the blades? The blades can probably stay. They're rusty old things. We don't really need them. Um, same deal here, uh, except that's sand that's picking them up. So let's, let's do it this way. Thank you. All right. I don't think you actually took anything. Yeah, you didn't. There we go. All right, well, we can head over here and see what we've got going on. Um, let's check in with the Band of Bones. There's, there's a lot of them here. Yeah, probably not worth us trying to attack them, but we definitely want to get rid of this group before long because uh, they have been a thorn in our side for a while, and um, I reckon we'll be able to do it, but it'll be a push, that's for sure. Let's see, this group here, that's one of the dust bandits. Yeah, the rest of them are all down. I'm going to let our team here go back towards home. They're done at this stage. They're all good. Barker, you can go back to uh, taking care of dog meat. Sticking with dog meat at the very least. Bodyguard, there you go. And all of you, your jobs can go back on. And I'm going to go get them sorted back into their squads. And so the Traveler's Squad is gone for now. We have a lot of our team just hanging about, waiting for things to do. And that's going to happen from time to time. Firebone, you're just chilling out. Up, oh, and there we go. All the action starts once again. Not fighting action this time, but just uh, a little bit of action. And we didn't knock out the wall this episode, but we did focus on doing a lot of expansion. We did get bread making up and running. We obviously have a decent amount of wheat straw that does get harvested and it pretty much gets turned into straw flour right away and it takes quite a bit of wheat straw before it does become straw flour but with the amount of bread that we've been getting I gotta think that um, we've been looking kind of okay. We've got a lot more dust sandwiches in here. Those are things that we didn't have before.
And that's the good thing about this is we we are actually producing food. Uh, we were relying on others for that before. Now we can be at least a little bit more self-reliant. We still need more water though. Um, that seems to be the main thing that we are lacking more often than not. This field here is ready to harvest, but surprisingly enough, we don't have our team working on them. They they seem to work together, even though I have kind of split up where their different roles are. They, um, yeah, they, they harvest the same thing more often than not, even though the others are in kind of different orders. I might have to just have a look at that again and just move it around even further. Park, just walk back inside for now, bud. I know you've got nothing else to do. You will eventually, I promise. Let's just drop these things off for now. Uh, actually, into the armor, if you would be so kind. Thank you very much, good sir. Let's arrange those. We'll be back to making blades before you know it. And, well, Hobbs will have researched some of the really good stuff for us. He's kind of, he's getting there. He's got a lot to get through still. Um, so he's going to be very, very busy, and uh, we might even look at doing a little bit more time skipping in the next episode. But uh, yeah, for now, we are going to be focusing on upgrading these more often than not, hoping that we have all the materials that we need to do it. Let's see. More than enough building materials still. The iron plates, though, that is something that we're always kind of having to, to work for. Although, very, very soon, we'll be able to upgrade this thing. And that'll have us with a level 3 refinery, which I'm thinking at that point probably won't even need workers. Because we've been working down each time we've been upgrading the refinery, so maybe that is the case. Um, a disturbing number of people, oh, I was going to say doing nothing, but no, engineering. Whenever these machines are quiet, I'm always a little concerned, but it's because everybody is pitching in to make this thing as fast as possible. Um, it takes a while, but with the amount of people that are working on it, it should be speeding up. Um, I gotta think that that's how construction works, but I don't know. Maybe there is a limit. And after that point, it's not as useful. Genty is still kind of hanging around here and just a little suspicious. He might be scouting the place out, but uh, could just be visiting. Maybe heard that the punchy gar was said to return. And it is. It is set to return. I think we're gonna knock down this wall and build it up in this location here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having, you know, or at least waiting until we have the advanced buildings that we can make. But maybe going for a super big building right off the bat isn't exactly what we need to be doing. We are going to be wrapping things up for today, though. A relatively long episode, but one in which everyone stayed home. Yay! Iron plates. Fantastic. Well, we need more iron plates to be able to get this thing constructed, which means the fastest way for us to do that is to probably just run back up towards the way station, pick up some plates to get that thing running a little smoother. As we know, plates are something that we're going to need a lot of. And maybe we might even need two of these refineries. See how that upgrade goes. But for now, that has been us. Thank you so much for joining me. I've been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, Stay tuned. Thank you all for joining me for another episode of Kinshi. If you don't know it already, you can pick up the very first piece of Rikon Roleplay's merchandise featuring Leonidas Aventus, the Dragonborn himself. There will be more items added to the store in the coming months, all available at rikonroleplays.com slash store. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the patrons who continue to make this content possible.